This old four wheeler, she's been sitting for 10, 12 years. Let's see if we can get her back running and throwing rooster tails in the woods. It's a 1989 Swazuki LT250R, two-stroke. That's the only kind of four-wheeler I've ever owned, and it's the only one I ever will own. Uh, love two-strokes. Uh, if you ain't never rode anything two-stroke, let me tell you, you don't know what you're missing. Ain't nothing else like it. Anyway, uh, I've got three of these four-wheelers, and you'll probably see the other two sometime, but not today. We're going to fix this one. Uh, well, let me tell you a story behind it real quick. I bought it from a guy I used to work with. Oh, 20, 25 years ago. Uh, anyway, they had just rebuilt it. New jug, new piston. Couldn't get it to run. So I got it pretty cheap. Brought it home, fooled with it for a couple of days. Scratching my head, could not figure it out. Well, let me just show you. Well, let me tell you this first. Uh, you could put around the yard. It'd do okay. As soon as you gave it any throttle, she'd die. Well, uh, let me show you this first. This is the air box. It's not supposed to have all these holes in it. I don't remember if I drilled them or somebody else. But uh, anyway, that comes off. Your air filter, that well, what's left of the air filter. <laughs> Look at what the Mises have done down in there too. I hate them. Anyway, this is your air box. It's supposed to be sealed up so no water will get in there and you know go up in the motor. It takes air. There's a little rubber boot right here. It takes air from this uh, tube on the frame. It acts like a snorkel. Well, uh, one day I took this apart, took the top off the air box, rode around, ran like a brand new one. Come to find out, the Mises got up in that tube there, built them a mansion, stopped it up. It couldn't get in here. That's all that was wrong with it. So I had a brand new motor for pretty cheap and plus, you know, the whole bike. Took this motor off and put it on my main four-wheeler because it was in a little better shape. Uh, that's the one I used to ride all the time. And, uh, well, I got into racing just a little bit and... I was pretty good, but something went awry one day at the track. I crashed, I broke a collarbone, a couple ribs, and I said, well, that's it. I'm done with that. That hurts too bad. That's a funny story about that, I'll tell you sometime, too. Anyway, I uh, took the motor off this, put it on my main four-wheeler, and then the motor that goes on this and came off of my main four-wheeler. Anyway, uh, fast forward a few years, all the way up probably 10, 12 years ago, I had two nephews that wanted to get them out and get them running. I said, okay, I don't care. So they did, and, you know, they worked on them, bought parts and put them together and all that, painted them. And, uh, well, one of them ended up blowing this one up. And, uh, well, it just locked up. It sat at my brother's for the last 10 or 12 years in his barn. I was up there last year sometime. I thought, well, let me get that, take it home. We'll fix it sometime. Well, sometimes right now. Uh, let me show you the motor real quick because it ain't in really good shape. I done tore it apart. I did this a few months ago before I decided to make a video of it. But this is what I found when I pulled the jug off. Yeah, <laughs> they broke the piston. Well, here's the even better part. It's locked up. The crank won't move. I think part of the skirt of this piston has gotten in between the crank and the uh, uh, housing. Uh, and it's got it stuck. So what we're going to have to do is split it. Yep. So that should be fun. But let me show you this too. One of the knot heads took the head off of it and just left it. Well, it's it's pretty rusty down in there. I think it's mostly just surface rust. I believe we'll be able to hone it out and it'll be just fine. That's a new piston and a gasket set right there. But yeah, we're gonna have to split the case and I got to clean all that out. Hopefully that's what it is. And then we'll put it back together and get it on the bike. And hopefully she'll run like a brand new one. I think I will scrape all this old mess off here first. Just so it don't get down in the motor and the transmission when I tear it apart. Uh, I got to think of this is bringing back a lot of memories. In my teens and early to mid 20s, this is all I did. I absolutely loved four wheelers, motorcycles. Well, anything had a lot of power. I wasn't much on speed. I liked power. When you hit the throttle, I want it to feel like a big old gorilla punching you in the chest. 
anyway this is all i used to do i could probably used to tear this apart and put it back together blindfolded that's how many times i've done it but yeah used to absolutely love it anyway let me get this cleaned up and then we'll get it tore apart all righty it has been many many years since i've worked on one of these um i don't remember exactly how it comes apart what all you got to take off I guess we'll just start over here, start taking stuff off, pull this side cover off and see what we see. Mm -hmm. I need a little bit longer extension. This, this is the longest one I could find. Yet, I guess. What in the world? All righty. I'll tell you what, like I told y'all, I used to be eat up with four wheelers, motorcycles in my younger years. I ain't no telling how many nights after I'd get off work, I'd come down here and work on these things till two or three o'clock in the morning. Used to love it. All right, let me get a hammer, pack over that a little bit. See if I can get this cover on. Yes, sir, yes, sir. No crap. I know I drained that sucker. What in the devil? Dartis. This thing has uh, a tunable, adjustable valve on the exhaust right there. I never really understood how it worked, but I never really cared. <laughs> anyway, let me get this clutch off here. This is what you call a wet clutch, by the way. It runs in uh, it runs in oil. Eh, it don't look too bad. Now I gotta get this nut off here. I don't know. I got any metrical sockets that big. I forgot about this big set I got. Look at right there. 27 millimeters. Mm. All right, that hurts. That hurts really, really bad. Somehow I got to be able to hold this. Let's see if this will do it right here. Oh, yeah. There's a little roller bearing right there. Then you got that gear, them gears, that's held on by a snap ring. I don't know if that's got to come off or not. Maybe, maybe not, we'll see. Shift fork, um, yeah, didn't let it come out. Let's go ahead and pull it out now. Well, I don't want to come out. It shouldn't be that darn tight. Hmm. Interesting. What in the world? It's locked up. I believe it's bent. Yes, sir. I believe that's bent. Ooh. Yeah, that ought to just slide right out. Yes, sir. I believe we got a bent shifter arm. Well. We drive it on through, I guess. Oh yeah, good gracious alive. <laughs> I don't know if y'all can see that or not, but it's bent pretty bad. I'll have to try to straighten that out. Now I got to get these gears off. And then I think we can split it. Tight. 
Ta-da! Now, let's get these ones here off of the crankshaft. What size are you, little buddy? Or whatever size that is. It may be left-hand thread. It is. I really hope I remember how this goes back together. Y'all know I got the memory of a tree stump. All right, let me get some snapping ring pliers and get that in all. This here, I'm not sure. That's the shifter. I'm not sure if it needs to come apart or not. I think I'll go ahead and take this stuff here off. Just in case. Oh yeah, I ain't coming loose. Oh yeah. Oh, let me get my little impact screwdriver. See if I can get that loose. I think I need my big hummer for this. Oh yeah. I think that's going to be good there on that. Uh, so now I think we just need to go to getting all the bolts loose. Yes sir, yes sir. Right? Ooh. Ooh. There's got to be, well there's three bolts. There's got to be more than that holding it together. You know what it probably is? It's probably got bolts coming from both sides. Yes sir. Um, well, let's pull this cover off over here, I guess, and go to looking. Wait a minute, here's some right here. All right, here's some right here. Never mind, never mind. Ooh. I don't know if there's any in here or not. I'll tell you what, let's take that cover off and just look, make sure there ain't none in there anywhere. Well, this cover's got eight millimeter, 10 millimeter, and a Phillips head screw. Yes, sir, there's one there, there's one there. These all are different lengths, so I'll never get them back where they go. Yeah, I'll tell you that. All right. I have no clue if I've got all the bolts out or not. I think I have. So, let's see if this thing is going to split on us or not. Let me get a rubber hammer so I don't bust that case. All right, let's whoop on it. Well, it ain't doing nothing, so that ain't good. Well, there went something that just fell apart, so that's good. The shifter, oh my goodness, it's got all kind of little parts. I'll never get that back together, so that's good. Obviously, I have left a bolt in it. So I'm gonna go to my house and get the book on it. And uh, well, hopefully it'll show me where all the bolts are. I figured it out, man. Figured it out, okay. Alrighty, upon further investigation, the book told me, I gotta take these two scrubs right cheer out. So as soon as I find my impact the driver, here it is. Uh, we'll get the screws out and it should, uh, should split then. one more time. Oh, oh yeah, we got them there now. All right. All right, now, this little fella ought to split. Let's see. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at there. Oh yeah, we're coming apart now.
There she comes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What we got in here? Good. Let's look at all the little metal, which is, you don't tell how many miles is put, put on this thing. All right. What has got us locked up? I don't really see nothing there that would lock us up. Hmm. Interesting. What about here? Well, there's a piece right there. I bet that's it. Yep. There's a piece right there that had us caught on the side, probably. Anyway, let's see if she roll. Yeah, but there's still something got us. I don't know what it is. Hmm. Uh-oh. Oh, crap. Where did that come from? Did it go right here? Well, this is the mess. Baron is falling out. Oh, man. What have I done? What have I done? <laughs> All right, I think it goes right here. Oh, crap. Well, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to get the book out. Wait a minute, I gotta put this bearing back in it. Alright. I think that's how that goes. And don't let that fall off no more. Alright. Now, what has this what has this locked up? Um hmm. You can see some rub marks right well son of a gun if that sucker didn't fall off again Ugh. stay all right uh you can see rub marks right here so um that's probably what's going on tell you what i really need to take that crank out completely I'm just going to take this gear off, I guess, because it, it won't stay. I really need to get the whole thing out, but I don't have a puller for the flywheel. And every it's just falling apart. Every dead blame thing it can is falling out. I'm going to try to get the flywheel off. What I'm going to do... I'm going to loosen it. And then against my better judgment, I'm going to whoop on it with a hummer. And maybe it'll come loose. Well, I got the flywheel off. Uh, I had to turn the camera off for a minute. Let's just say I got a little violent. That's that's all y'all need to know. I'm glad it come off, though. Because we got to get that uh, we gotta get that crank out of there and get all that cleaned up. Let us get this out. Yeah, there's a bunch of garbage down in there. All that's little bitty pieces of that piston skirt. Yep. So let's clean that up, and then I reckon we can put it back together. All right, I did a little bit of cleaning on it, and uh, yeah, I can see where it's been rubbing. The This is one half of the crankcase. This is the other half. This is where the crankshaft spins. Well, there's not a lot of clearance between here and this surface of the crankshaft. I mean, it's really small. And just it was just little bits and pieces of aluminum from that piston skirt that got jammed down in here. Actually, I think what it was is there was a lot of it uh, attached to the bottom of this rod. And I think that's probably what was, you know, had it locked up. Um, but here is another issue that I found. Here's the seal that was on the flywheel side. Well, it was on there cockeyed. Just like that right there. It was supposed to be like that. Well, it was cockeyed just like that. How it was even running, I don't know. But on a two-stroke, you've got to have good crankshaft seals or it ain't going to run. Or it ain't going to run right anyway. Um, if y'all don't know the way a two-stroke system works, the piston comes down. It's pressurizing this crankcase area. Well, when it comes past the port in the cylinder, well, that forces this fuel-air mixture into the cylinder. Well, when the piston goes back up, it's creating a vacuum in this area, which causes fuel and air to come through the carb roster. And here, this, you know, it's that's why you mix oil with two stroke 
because it's it's oil in all these bearings, rod bearings, them two crank bearings there. Anyway, if the seals are not good, well, that pressure and vacuum, it won't work right, and it won't run right. Sometimes it won't even run. So if I put that back in there, you know, like it's supposed to be instead of cockeyed, with that being distorted like that, it won't ever seal. It won't run right. So I'm going to order this seal, one for the other side, and the other side also has a little O-ring in this spacer that slips over it. So I'm going to get that O-ring too. But I think we can go ahead and put it back together, and I can put those seals in later. So after I get this cleaned up, we'll, we'll just put it back together. All right, I got it cleaned up pretty good. Uh, took some carb cleaner. I sprayed all this old metal dust out. I had to spray these bearings out too because I believe they had little bits of aluminum in them. I'll have to put some Earl back on them before I put it back together. Uh, got a couple of little boogered up spots on the crankcase halves. There's one right there too. I'll take a file and clean them up. Um, got my seals ordered. They should be here in two days. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put it back together. I'm gonna put you on time lapse. So let's get busy. Fellers, in true this and that garage, backyard butchery fashion. <laughs> Remember that gear that kept falling off on me? Well, this is it. It goes on the inside of the case. So, yep, I gotta take it all back apart. Sure do. All right, well, I'll see y'all when I get it put back together. How about that? Well, I got it back apart. There the little fella is, he goes right there. Yep. <laughs> It wouldn't be normal if something like this didn't happen to me, I'm telling you. If if I had a job and it went smoothly, the whole thing, it'd scare me to death. I would think the world was coming to an end. <laughs> anyway, let me get the old RTV off of this and, well, I'll just put it back together again. Well, I got it put together for the <laughs> second time. Hopefully, I didn't forget nothing this time. I will tell you this, though. This is part of the shifter. Well, I fought with it about an hour trying to get it to shift. It just would not shift. Well, come to find out, these little things right here, they're called paws. They move in and out. Well, I had them in backwards. <laughs> Imagine that. Once I figured that out, it's just like a brand new one. Uh, this is as far as I can take it. Uh, that seal goes here. And I can't put the clutch basket on or this gear. Same thing on the other side. Can't put the uh, flywheel on until I get that seal. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to call it a day. Didn't get a whole lot done, but, well, I mean, that seems to be the norm anymore. Tomorrow, we're going to hone the cylinder, put the piston on, and uh, that's about all we can do to the motor till we get them seals. They're supposed to be here in a couple of days. Uh, we can work on the front brakes. They don't work. Uh, I got tires coming. They'll probably be two or three days before they're here. We ain't got a whole lot more we can do. We'll be waiting on parts. But anyway, we'll pick it up tomorrow. Well, it's the next day. Actually, it's, well, pretty close to being the next evening. I've uh, been running around town all day. Well, I got me some eyeglasses coming. Uh, I've never wore glasses before. Went to the eye doctor, uh, got that all straightened out. My glasses will be here in about a week and a half. So maybe maybe I can see what I'm doing and I won't forget to put parts in. I doubt it. That's that's a brain problem, not an eye problem. Anyway, uh, well, y'all ain't going to believe me unless I show you. Look what's sitting here. They weren't supposed to be here for two more days. Uh, you know, I talk bad about Walmart quite a bit because I just... That self-checkout just, well, it angers me. But I've ordered a couple of things in the last few weeks online from them. And let me tell you, their shipping, it's starting to get as good as Amazon Prime. Yeah, that was, I think, two days. Yep, way to go Walmart. Anyway, I think we got enough time to probably hone this out, get that on the motor, 
and we might fool with the brakes. And if I'm feeling really frisky, we may work on the tires a little bit. Y'all hear that dog barking? Guess who that is? That's Miss Daisy. That's the neighbor's dog. That's not mine, in case y'all don't, some of y'all don't know. Uh, their son, little son, I don't know how old he is, 10, 12, somewhere in there. He's got a remote control car <laughs> here. And she don't like stuff like that. She's, he's running it up and down the driveway. Well, she's chasing it back and forth, barking at it. <laughs> All right, one of y'all last week asked me about this home. You want to know what it was? It is an Amco Tools Incorporated. That's A-M-M-C-O. Model number. Well, <laughs> if I had glasses, I could... Oh, crap, oh, crap. All right. Anyway, model 3800, I believe is what it is. Yes, sir. Amco Tools Incorporated model 3800. Anyway, let's uh, let's get this thing honed out. Well, I got to have a rag. Let me get a rag. Yeah, she's cleaning up. We ain't quite there yet, though. If this was a newer bike, newer motor, I couldn't do this because they are, they are all aluminum. This has a cast iron sleeve in there. You can knock it out and replace it. The newer ones, they're all aluminum and they coat the cylinder wall with, I think it used to be called nichrome. Uh, but yeah, you can't, you can't just hone it out. When it gets scratched up and gets, you know, gouges in it, well, that's, it's aluminum showing, so you have to bore it and then send it off, and they uh, they'll recoat it with. I believe it's called nichrome. I may be wrong on that. That was a pretty good cross hatch, but I still got a little bit of a little bit of rust going on up here at the top. Uh, let me hit it just a little bit more. And then I may get the dial bore gauge out. Let's just let's just check and see where we're at. Yep, yeah, I think that's pretty doggone good. Let me get my dial bore gauge out, and get it set. We'll just see how much wear we got on that. All right, I got my dial bore gauge set uh, to the stock bore, which is. Uh, 67 millimeters or two inches and 637 thousandths and eight tenths. I believe that's right. But anyway, you know, I told y'all they coat the newer two strokers. Uh, they don't have the cast iron sleeve. I called it Nicro. No, it's Nicosil. I knew it was Nick or something. Anyway, uh, the newer ones, you know, like I said, they don't have sleeve, but you can put a sleeve in them. I done it. One of my nephews had, a, I think, a YZ 125 a few years ago. It was wore out, so he bought the sleeve, cast iron sleeve. I bored it out, pressed the, uh, well, I didn't press it. It was, you know, I heated and cooled. Anyway, put a new cast iron sleeve in it, bored the sleeve out to match the piston. But yes, you can do that instead of sending it off to have the Nicosil put on it. Anyway, let us see where we are at as far as stock bore goes. According to this, we are one and a half thousandths over that away this way we are uh, a little well it's about one and a half thousand so yeah there ain't no egg shape i'm telling you i see <laughs> i see double set of these lines that's why i went to the eye doctor today i'm telling you i'm getting where i can't see nothing let's check it in the middle of the bore we got that's about two and a half there so we got some taper all right, let me go on down, if I can, get past these ports. And at the bottom, we got, well, it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty much dead on at the bottom because it's, there ain't no wear down there. I don't think we're just completely wore out because right here in the meat of it, like I said, it's showing about two and a half. Anyway, I think we're good. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean this up. 
Then we're gonna put it on that motor, get the new piston and all that uh, put in. Yes, sir, that's what we're gonna do. All right, I put a light coat of RT and V. Well, I don't know that I'm gonna get this gasket on. What in the devil? There it goes. I put a light coat RTV on the bottom, probably put it on the top too. I uh, want to get this in place before I get that piston on. Um, yep. All right, let me go get the piston on and we'll get it put on and we'll put this jug on. I'm opening up the box for the piston. It's a wise code. I'm not gonna tell you what to pay for it. It's outrageous. But look what it come in. It's a little video bag uh, reminds me of a Crown Royal bag. That's very odd. <laughs> what in the world? I have never had a piston come in a bag like that. Anyway, there's the clips for the uh, wrist pin. And it does not come with a new bearing. What in the devil? I'm going to have to use the old bearing. Where's the piston? I'm glad I didn't throw it away. What did I do with it? Let me see if I can find that. All right, I found the old piston and that's the bearing for the wrist pin. Here's my rings. I don't know. Here's a sticker. Put that on the bike and make it faster. Yeah, we'll put that on a little bit. What does this paperwork say? Let me look at it. And then uh, I got to figure out which way the rings go. We'll get them on, get it put on there, and get the jug put on. And we'll just keep on trucking. All right, I'm going to check the uh, end gap on these rings. See where we're at. It needs to be about 10 thousandths, uh, about four thousandths per inch of bore. This is a 2.6, whatever, so about 10, 10 11, somewhere in there. Let us see what we have. Uh, let's see, let's start with a, uh, that's a pretty good gap. Let's see with 12 will fit. Oh yeah, <laughs> we got plenty of gap. That's probably 20,000, it's probably double what it needs to be. Let me see what 20 will go. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's a, sort of tight, but 20, 20 will go. Yep. Then you don't worry about the ring gap. Well, let me show y'all something on the rings on a two stroke piston. Let's see if I can find it, right? I don't know if y'all can see it or not. But there's a little pin right there on that ring groove, and then the other one is right there. The reason for that, well, let me just show you this. On a two stroke, see those ports down in there? Well, that's. You know, your gas comes in and out here and exhaust comes out this port. See them ports there? You don't want that ring gap on an opening because, uh, you know, it can come out a little bit and it'll catch it and break it. And, well, that ain't no good. So, yeah, the piston has pins for the rings to go around. Let me show you the end of one of the rings. It's not like a, you know, regular old car. Uh, see that open space there on the inside? Well, that's what that pin goes up in so yeah you have to do that and the paperwork said it didn't matter which way they went but i'm gonna put the numbers up just because it's just the way you do it anyway let me get these put on and uh, i'll get the piston put on the rod and we'll get this thing put together hopefully all right here's a little roller bearing for the pin i got it lubed up already um, now here's the wrist pin. I probably ought to put a little bit of Earl on it. Let me do that real quick. All right, here's the pin, wrist pin. You got two clips. That's what holds the wrist pin in. Right here in this bag. Well, you go ahead, put one of them on one side. That way, once you get it on the rod, you're going to be fighting with two of them. Just put one of them in. There's a little arrow. We go to the front. We'll put this one on over here. Yeah, it's gonna be aggravating right there now. Well, what in the devil? My hands is so slippery. Oh, get in there, you son of a gun, you! I'll be back when I get this in. <laughs> well, somebody's gonna have to come put this in for me, I guess. I just well. <laughs> I ain't never in my life seen nothing like it. Finally. All right. Well, I got one of them in. So then what you do, you already got the uh, wrist pin bearing in. Oh, you just slide her on up here like this right here. You slide that wrist pin in just like that right there. 
Then you gotta get it lined up with that bearing. Hopefully. There she goes, just like that. Then I get to fight putting this other clip on. Uh, I'll be back when I get that done because that was aggravating on the other one. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? What in the devil? And if I let that go, that's going to go to the bottom of that crankcase. If that ain't something to tell the dead blame captain. If it'll stay right there, then we'll go get a pick. Come on out of that little fella. Don't you fall. Oh, look at here. Come on. Goodness gracious. Here's a little tech tip. <laughs> when you put your clip on your wrist pin, put your rag right here so you don't drop it down in the motor. Yes sir, yes sir. Reed. All right. I got that one in. So now, I reckon we go ahead and put that, to, put that jug on. Let me get this wiped off a little bit. Let me make sure that arrow goes to the front. <laughs> I'm reading the instructions after the fact. I'm going to put that in. And what does it say right there? Place the shop towel over the engine case opening to avoid dropping any components into the engine. Yes, sir. Well, I should have read the instructions. Anyway, I'm trying to make sure that arrow goes to the front, to the exhaust port. All righty. Upon further investigation, this don't say anything about the arrow, which I do find odd. But... Um, it does tell you about lubrication holes for the exhaust bridge. I'm assuming the exhaust bridge is that divider right in there in between, you know, it's got two exhaust ports. Um, it says when it's got that bridge, then you need two holes or you need to drill two holes in the, in the skirt of the piston. Well, it's already got the two holes. So we're facing the right way. But I do find it odd that it doesn't tell you which way that arrow goes. Anyway, let's, uh, Let's get the cylinder on. Now here comes the most aggravating part of the whole process. Cause like I told you, these ring grooves have uh, the pins in them to hold the ring in a certain spot. And they can get out of whack. And you know, the ring won't compress all the way if, if it ain't in the right spot. So it can get aggravating. Anyway, here we go. Let's see what we can do with it. You don't need a ring compressor because the bottom of that, uh, jug that cylinder is tapered so it is its own little ring groove compressor and all you do is just slip it over just like it right there and get all your holes lined up just like it right there slide her on down let me get something to peck on that wheel how about a how about a plastic or fiberglass, whatever that is, handle or hammer? I do believe that is down. Um, I don't know the specs on these nuts, so let me look that up and we'll tighten that up real quick and then we'll get to the head on it. All right, according to the book, this is one, two, three, four. They get tightened down to, uh, what is it, 19 to 21 and a half feet each pounds. These three little ones across the front, they are six to eight and a half feet each pounds. So let me get all these on, get them run down, and I'll torque them down. Then we'll put the silver head on, and then uh, might go ahead and put the carburetor on. We'll see. Now, put the reed cage in. I'll leave the carburetor off for now. All right, I got all them uh, nuts tightened up. Y'all watch this right here. Kaplow, kaplow. Um, I got a dilemma. Uh, I was looking at my head gasket, fixing to clean this head up. And well, here's the new one, here's the old one. The new one's missing some holes right here. Uh, um, uh, there's no instructions. Don't know if it goes this way, this way, which way it turns. Um, so yeah, I have a dilemma that I've got to figure out how this goes. So as soon as I get that figured out, uh, we'll put this head on. 
Alrighty, upon further investigation, uh, I'm still confused. <laughs> the book says this gasket is supposed to have an E for exhaust port. It goes towards the exhaust and E goes up. It does not have an E anywhere on it. Well, according to a couple of forums, the area where there's no holes, it goes um, right here where this hose goes on. This mounts just like it right there. So it would go just like it right there. Uh, the little holes go to the exhaust. So, you know, if I flipped it over this way and then do that, well, it wouldn't be right. So according to the interwebs, it goes like this. If this is wrong and it blows my motor up, well, somebody's getting sued. <laughs> anyway, let me get this on here. I got to clean this surface up here and we'll get this torqued down and uh, we'll pretty much be done with the motor other than waiting on those seals to get here. All right, I just cleaned up. So let's go over to head and get it put on. You know what I did not buy? I did not buy a sparking plug. Oh, that pinks the devil out of my finger. Why do I always do stuff like this? Dad gum, that hurt. Ooh. All right, now, uh, I, got, I got to look through my bucket of bolts here and find the head nuts. I think these are them. If they fit, well, that's gonna be them. I believe that's it. They get tightened down to like eight feetage pounds at first, and then they go to uh, 21 and one half. I guess I ought to clean them up. They look pretty nasty. All right, they get tightened down to 11 feetage pounds initially. Then you go to, I think 20, yes, they're 21 and one half. Same thing as these other ones here. All right, I'll let that sit for a little bit. We'll check them again, but other than putting the recage in, this is done till we get our uh, seals. Well, I figured it's time to fill with the brakes since we're waiting on partages for the motor. Uh, this may end as quickly as it starts because, well, as you can see right there, there's, I mean, there's nothing left of that bolt head. And then this don't belong there either. It should be a, a flat head. Uh, yeah, this may be why the brakes don't work. Never could get that top off. Let me fight with that a little bit and uh, see if I can get that off. If not, well, we won't have front brakes. If you don't know, this is the brake fluid reservoir for the front brakes. Here's your brake handle. Um, this is the top and you put the fluid down in there. Um, it ain't, <laughs> it ain't looking good. Um, yeah, it ain't looking good. Hey, look at there. Well, all right, maybe we'll have some front brakes. Let me see if I can get that loose right there. Yes, sir, well, that's pretty good. Somebody cut a groove in it for, for a flat head screwdriver. Well, I will be. Let me get that now. I can't tell if that's an Allen head or if it's a Phillips that's been rounded. Uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna get the little chanty locks on it and hopefully we can grab hold of it. Oh yeah, she just broke loose. Well, this is just amazing right here. This is a pretty good day. Yes, sir. Speaking of that, y'all might have noticed yesterday that I wasn't in a chipper mood. Uh, well, I was in some terrible, terrible pain, sinus pain. My eyeballs felt like they were gonna pop out. Uh, well, it felt like there was a little feller inside my head with a great big old hummer just, just pounding away at the backs of my eyeballs. I'm telling you, it was hurting. But I feel much better today. All right, there is no fluid. There's a little bit of nastiness. Let me clean that out and we'll put some fluid in it and just see what happens. Put that fluid in there, you son of a gun. All right, let's see if I can get any of this in there if I spill it all on the floor. All right, let me work this handle. We're getting some air, so that's always good. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm getting some air, so let me work this handle. Get all that air out and then uh, we'll go to the front brakes and bleed them. You let it sit for a couple of seconds and then hit it again, there's a lot of air comes out. Well, I've been pumping it for a couple of minutes now and I ain't getting no more air, but I do have just a little bit of pedal about right there. So I think it's time to go down here to the wheels and we'll pop the bleeders open and uh, see if we can get it a little bit better. All right, it's got quite a bit more pedal. Let me bleed this one real quick and see if it don't help it out anymore. Well, 
We all look at this right here. That's pretty doggone good pedal. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to let it set till tomorrow. And if it's still got pedal like that, well, we're going to call it good. Uh, it's supposed to have a rubber gasket right here. Well, that's gone. Uh, it looked like it had some RTV on it, maybe. I don't know if I did that or one of the nephews, but I think I'm going to make a gasket for it. Yeah, let's do that. Well, there's my gasket. It's kind of crude, but hey, if it works, who cares? Um, I don't have any new scrubs, metrical scrubs. So I'm going to have to use these for now. I'm just not going to tighten them up real tight. So that way, if I need to get it off again, well, I can. Well, I think I'm going to try to get <laughs> what's left of this air filter out. I need this this uh, bolt in the cage. I'm going to see if I can find one online. I, I completely forgot about trying to get one of these. But if I can find one, I reckon I'll, I'll go ahead and order it. But yeah, this, this fella here, well, good gracious, look at it. It's just falling apart. Anyway, let me see if I can find one of them. Well, I reckon I'll call it a day. Uh, didn't get a whole lot done today. Well, not on this anyway. I got some other stuff done. But uh, those seals, they probably won't be in until tomorrow afternoon. So that'll give us all day to put those four tires on. And I'm sure we can find some other stuff to do to it. So I guess I'll see y'all tomorrow. Well, I'm coming to y'all from the future, as you can see. The bike, the motor's back on it and all that. I'm having a few technical difficulties. Things happen, you just can't control it. That's just all I can tell you. Uh, just letting you know that we're gonna shut the video down here. It'll be a two-parter, as you could already figure that out. Um, hopefully, we'll get that thing running and ripping through the woods again. Let me say this before I close the video out. This might not be what some of y'all wanna see, this type of content, but it's all I can do right now. I don't have a shop. Uh, false alarm, by the way, on the trusses. They're not ready. Thought they were, but they're not. As soon as they get here, we'll start putting the shop together. But until I do have a shop, I can't, the old vehicles that I've already drug out of the woods, I don't have anywhere to work on them. My, my garage too small, this basement's too small. It's winter, and well, I'm just too old. It, the cold, it hurts me, <laughs> I ain't kidding you. So I just can't go out in the woods in the cold and work on stuff all day, every day. So I'm doing this type of stuff just to keep y'all videos coming. And eventually, we'll get to start working on that old junk that I've drug out of the woods and more. Just stick with me. Anyway, appreciate y'all watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you don't mind, hit that like, comment, subscribe. Share it with your friends. And until next time, go do something. Blur, blur.